Hello again everyone, this is Mr. V. Hill and I'm going to talk today about completing the square. This is how to solve a quadratic equation when there is a b times x term in the equation. Uh, but before we get to that, what I need you guys to do is go ahead and simplify each of these expressions here. Uh, so go ahead and hit pause on the video and multiply each of these expressions out and then we're going to check them in just a sec. So pause the video right now. No quit cheating. Pause the video and work these out. Seriously, pause the video. Okay, so let's see here. You should have gotten these expressions. Now if any of you tried to distribute the square into the sum and said like this was x squared plus 9 and completely lost this linear term here, kick yourself in the shins repeatedly and then go back and work through it again. You have to use the distributive property three times in each of these and then combine the like terms. But the main thing here is that completing the square is based upon this pattern that we see. Notice here half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. The square of negative 4 is 16. Half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. And so on and so forth. That's the big idea here. And once you understand that pattern in these expressions, everything becomes pretty simple. So let me show you how we're going to apply this pattern to an example problem. We'll call this one example one. And the equation we're going to try to solve is going to be x squared plus 10x plus 4 equals 7. Now, if you remember from solving by graphing, in order to solve by graphing, we needed one side of the equation to equal 0. For completing the square, we don't need that. But if we were to solve this by graphing, just to see what the solutions ought to be, we would need this to be equal to 0. So this would be equivalent to x squared plus 10x. We'd subtract 7 from both sides, minus 3 equals 0. So we would graph y equals x squared plus 10x minus 3. And we can just do that in your calculator really quick here. I've even got it already typed in. We just graph this. So we see approximate solutions. Here's one that's in between 0 and 1. This one over here looks to be a little bit to the left of negative 10. Um, nice thing you can do with your calculator is actually figure out exact, well not exactly, but you get approximate values if you go to the calculate menu, hit second function and then calculate. We're trying to find the zeros of this function. That's item two here. When you hit that, it brings up, it asks you these two questions here. Left bound. Notice where my cursor is. If I just move to the left of where the zero is and hit enter, okay. Now the calculator is asking me for a right bound. Click over to the right, so my cursor is to the right of the zero. Hit enter again, asking us for an initial guess. Okay, so here we go. The zero is, and here it says the x coordinate is about negative 10.2915. But that's gonna be an approximate solution. Calculator will not give you exact solutions when the zeros are irrational. Let's find the other one over here. So again, we'll go second calculate. Now we're going to scroll way over here to where we're just to the left of the zero. All right, like that. Hit enter. It's asking for us asking for a right bound. Click to the right. Hit enter. And enter again, and the calculator is telling us that x could also be approximately 0.2915. Okay, so those are just approximate solutions. We want to get exact solutions. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of this item right here. That if we had x squared plus 10x plus 25, we could rewrite it this way, x plus 5 quantity squared. Well, that's not quite what we have here. So what we want to do is first get rid of this adding 4. Because we don't want adding 4 here, we want adding 25 here. So let's subtract 4 from both sides. And that'll leave us with x squared plus 10x. And I'm going to leave some space, because really this, these are canceling out. 7 plus negative 4, or 7 minus 4 would be 3. Now what we're going to do is, this is the actual completing the square item, or action here. We want a plus 25 right here. So we're just going to add 25 to this side, and we're going to add 25 to the other side. So now we've got x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 28. We could have accomplished the exact same thing, just adding uh, 21 to both sides here, and that's perfectly fine, but you're going to see why it just, when we do this in general to develop the quadratic formula, you're going to have to do this kind of idea, so that's why I showed it there. But either way, it works just fine. But now we're great, because now we've got exactly what we wanted on the left-hand side. x squared plus 10x plus 25 is exactly the same thing as x plus 5 quantity squared. And that's great. Now we only see the x in this one spot. Here we had an x here and an x over here. And on top of that, they weren't even like terms. So we couldn't combine an x squared with an x. So we were out of luck right here. But now what we've kind of done is taken this linear term, the 10x, and you can think about it as kind of like rolling that back into the squaring function. And now we can simply undo what's being done to x in the reverse order of operations. So first thing, we have to undo this squaring. The way to undo a squaring is by taking the positive and the negative square root of the whole thing. But of course, we have to do that to both sides. So the plus or minus square root and squaring cancel each other out. Now we've got x plus 5 is equal to both the positive and negative versions of the square root of 28. Now all we have to do is undo this adding 5. We'll do that by subtracting 5 or adding negative 5. I'm just going to do that, adding negative 5 instead, just so I can apply a little commutative property here, because it looks a little bit better. So now the adding 5 and adding negative 5 cancel each other out left with x on the left hand side and we've got negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 28 on the right hand side. And those are our two solutions. Negative 5 plus the square root of 28 and negative 5 minus the square root of 28. Now keep in mind we still want to write our solutions in simplified radical form. 28 has a factor of 4 in it. Square root of 4 is 2, so simplifying this down, you'll get x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 7. So I've been doing a lot of review problems on simplifying radical expressions lately. So here, our solution set we're saying is going to consist of the set of negative 5 plus 2 times the square root of 7 and negative 5 minus 2 times the square root of 7. Now what we might want to do is evaluate these expressions in our calculator just to see if we actually get what we were looking at up here with these approximate solutions. So let's just quit out of there. And let's see here, negative 5 plus 2 times the square root of 7 
There's our point two nine one five approximate answer, and negative five minus two times the square root of seven. There's that negative ten point two nine one five approximate solution. So yeah, uh, these are definitely the correct answers. We'd be very uh, oddly lucky if we got these things to match up with the approximate solutions and if they weren't right. Okay. So that's pretty much it for completing the square. Let's just do one more example for just in case we end up with an equation where a happens to not be 1. Because back over here, notice all of these, the coefficient of x squared was 1. Here, 3x squared plus 18x minus 15 equals 0. We've got a problem that 3 right there. But it's pretty easy to deal with. We're just going to divide both sides of the equation by 3. Then when we distribute the dividing by 3 here, of course 3x squared divided by 3 would just be x squared. 18x divided by 3 would be 6x. 15 divided by 3 would be just 5. 0 divided by 3 is 0. So now we're in a nice situation where we can attempt to use completing the square. So now what we want to use is this one. x plus 3 quantity squared is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. But we don't have this plus 9 here, we've got a subtracting 5. So we're going to get rid of that. We don't want this subtracting 5, so let's add 5 to both sides. And now we've got x squared plus 6x. I'm going to leave some space. Equals 5 now. And we're just going to add in what we need. We want adding 9. So we'll just add 9 to this side add 9 to this side, and now we're in a great situation. x squared plus 6x plus 9 is now equal to 5 plus 9 is 14, but we know what x squared plus 6x plus 9 is when we write it this way. This is called factored form because we got x plus 3 times x plus 3, those are factors. So we've got x plus 3 quantity squared is now equal to 14. And now we're just going to undo what's being done to x in reverse order of operations. We undo the squaring by taking the positive and negative square root of both sides so that these things will cancel out and we're left with x plus 3 is equal to the positive and negative square root of 14. Now we undo the adding 3 by subtracting 3 or adding negative 3. These will cancel out and now we're left with x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 14. So our solution set S would contain these two values, negative 3 plus the square root of 14 and negative 3 minus the square root of 14. Now we can check our answers just by graphing them and see if the approximate solutions we see on the graph are about what we get here. So we'll graph now this is actually the original equation was equal to zero, so we don't need to fix that any. So we'll just graph y is equal to three times x squared plus 18x minus 15. Three times x squared plus 18x minus 15. Graph that. Okay, and then you see our two zeros here. Let's calculate them. Calculate the zero. 
left bound. Let's see here. Where is my little cursor? There it is. Make sure I'm left of the zero. Hit enter. Move to the right of the zero. Hit enter. Hit enter again. And the approximate solutions we're going to see are about 0.742 for this one. Now we'll find the one over here on the left. There we go. My cursor is to the left of the zero. Cursor to the right of the zero. Hit enter again. And x is going to be approximately negative 6.742 or so. So let's see if we get these values when we approximate these up here. So we've got negative 3 plus the square root of 14. Yep, there's my 0 0.742. And negative 3 minus the square root of 14. There's my negative 6.742. So yeah, these are going to be the correct solutions. Okay. And that's pretty much it for completing the square.